This spring and early summer, I carried my camera around everywhere I went in hopes of catching some great wildlife footage, especially baby wildlife. You must admit, all baby animals are just so darn cute. Mostly, I found birds. One morning, while strolling through the woods, my dad and I stumbled upon some sandhill crane chicks and ducked into the woods to hide from their extremely intimidating parents. Sandhill cranes mate for life. Both mates gather materials and build a nest on the ground in shallow wetland areas. Females usually lay two eggs and incubate them for about a month. Young are well developed when they hatch and can stand up and walk shortly after hatching. Young cranes stay with their parents through the migration season for up to nine to ten months and venture off on their own the following spring. <laughs> Probably the easiest baby bird to find is the American robin. <whistles> Nests full of the familiar robin's egg blue eggs adorn the trees, shrubs, ledges, and porches of every home and yard in the UP. The female robin builds a nest and lays between three to five eggs, which she incubates for about 11 to 14 days. Baby robins are helpless at birth. For the first four days of a nestling's life, both parent birds regurgitate partly digested food into each baby's mouth. By day five, the nestlings get pieces of earthworms and soon parents give them whole worms and insects. Robins reach the size of their parents and jump out of the nest after just two weeks. These fledglings can't fly very well when they leave the nest. It takes up to two more weeks to build up muscles and grow adult feathers to be strong flyers. I learned something else. Baby robins produce fecal sacs. This is poop encased in mucus right after eating. Mama robin either carries the little birdie diaper away from the nest or gobbles it down as a nutritious little snack. Yum. Now you know how a robin's nest stays so clean. These baby birdie diapers are not unique to robins. Fecal sacs are common among songbirds, like bluebirds and orioles. We had our very first oriole visit us this spring. Orioles nest in tall, deciduous trees, usually 20 to 30 feet above the ground. Their nest looks like a hanging pouch firmly attached to a branch. Females tightly weave the nest from whatever they can find, and the male sings to defend the nesting territory. Orioles lay three to six eggs, and females incubate the eggs for 12 to 14 days. Both parents feed the nestlings. Young orioles leave the nest only 12 to 14 days after hatching. There is no shortage of waterfowl in the UP. Spend some time around any body of water, and you're sure to see a few species. Canada geese nest on the ground, usually on a muskrat mound or other slightly elevated site near water. Females select the nest site, build the nest, and lay between two to eight eggs. Males guard the nest while the female incubates for about 28 days. Goslings are fluffy and yellowish with a black bill. They leave the nest at one to two days old, depending on the weather, and can walk, swim, and feed. Young geese often remain with their parents for their entire first year. <laughs> Mallard ducklings are a common sight on UP lakes. Mallards can build nests on the ground more than one mile from water. The female will lay anywhere from 5 to 15 eggs and they typically hatch in early June. Within a day of hatching, mom will lead her brood to water. Ducklings are tended by mom but feed themselves, mostly aquatic insects. Ducklings can fly around two months. One thing I noticed, mallard babies move crazy fast. Our largest native waterfowl is the trumpeter swan. Trumpeter swans do not necessarily mate for life. Pairs remain together throughout the breeding season, but may switch partners the following year. Together, they build nests on beaver dams and muskrat houses. Trumpeter swans incubate the eggs by covering them with their webbed feet. They will hatch as many as nine babies, called cygnets, between June and July. Both parents look after the cygnets until they are a year old. Though they can swim from birth, cygnets may sometimes ride on their parents' backs. Adult swans are vegetarians, eating stems, leaves, and roots of aquatic plants. But cygnets will eat many insects and other small invertebrae for the first two weeks. Young swans fly when they are three to four months old, just in time to migrate south. I managed to capture one other baby that was not a bird. 
Probably the most commonly seen and most adorable wildlife babe in the UP is the whitetail fawn. Travel any UP back road this time of year and you're sure to spot at least one. One fawn was even born right in my yard this year. And while I was walking up my road, hoping to spot another newborn fawn, it found me. Whitetail fawns are born around the 1st of June. Does drop their fawns about six and a half months after conception. Most first year does will have only one fawn and will typically give birth to twins and sometimes triplets in subsequent years. At birth, whitetail fawns weigh only six to eight pounds. A fawn can stand up and nurse within 30 minutes and walk just a few hours after birth. These twins I filmed though stood up and wobbled away within 30 minutes. Fawns are born with a reddish brown coat covered in about 300 spots. A natural camouflage that helps them blend in with the dappled pattern of sunlight on the forest floor. From day one through the first few weeks of a fawn's life, its mother will hide it and leave it unattended for up to eight hours at a time. A doe will also hide twins and triplets separately. The doe will return periodically to nurse the fawn. Fawns are born almost odorless, so between no scent and their spotted camouflage, they are more hidden from predators when they are left alone, away from mom. A fawn also knows to stay completely still or lay flat to hide when it senses danger. Fawns are usually weaned at two to three months. In early fall, a fawn's spots fade away. Female fawns usually stay with their mothers for two years. Males leave after a year. Not as common as fawns, but often seen are black bear cubs and red fox kits. Baby fox are called kits or pups. A typical litter is about four to five. At birth, red foxes are actually brown or gray and usually turn red within about a month. Red fox usually live in the forested areas and dig burrows in the ground to create dens in which to live and have their pups. But they also have adapted well to suburban and rural communities. I've been actually getting a lot of calls on baby foxes actually in urban areas. So it seems to be a bumper crop of foxes out this year. Red foxes are fairly adapted to human presence. Um, so they're not as skittish and that's why I think we're getting a lot of calls this year. You know, they're perfectly comfortable in that urban interface setting. And when they're gonna be born probably in the late April, early May. Uh, they're going to start st stay with their mother probably um, right up until August, September. And then they're going to start venturing further out. As they mature, they're going to become more solitary. They don't um, actually stay together that long. And of course, just a reminder, it's always best to leave baby animals alone and keep your distance. We really ask that you try to leave baby animals alone um, unless you know for a fact that mom is dead. Then, then we can try to intervene. But generally, we try to let uh, nature take its course. They're old enough now that they should be able to make it on them, sit by themselves. I know that can be a, a tough answer sometimes, but really, we're doing what's best for that wildlife species.